Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for another session with Dashboard Gear. Today we're going over a business intelligence tip that we get asked a lot when we're creating uh, reports. Now the, the title I put on here was Percentage of Sales Calculation and SQL Server Reporting Services, uh, but really this applies to creating a percentage of any type of account. It's a scenario we see over and over when doing reports. For example, with our healthcare customers, they want the percentage of like per patient day uh, calculations, that kind of thing. Anytime you're doing a kind of division from one value to another, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my SQL reporting services uh, instance here on my laptop and just run a, a basic report so you can see what it looks like. Now, this is just a real simple expense account listing that I put together prior to this. And a common use case we see is someone wants to take the amount of each expense line and show it also a percentage of total sales for that expense. So they can get kind of a feel for, you know, how, how critical it is uh, within that. So I'm gonna jump back to my address. So like something like this is, uh, a report we want to get to where we have each expense account line and then the percent of the total sales that that represents. Now, you know, at first glance, when things are all in one row, it's pretty easy to do calculations. And most of you can do expressions and calculations on single rows of data. But when you want to take something and divide it by a total of another line item, sales in this case, or patient days, and if you're doing per patient day, that kind of thing, it gets a little bit tricky. So there are a few different ways to do it, but we've seen one pattern that works very well in our reporting instance. And so I'm going to walk you through those steps today and create that calculation that you just saw and how you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this expense account listing uh, report here. We'll just edit that in Report Builder. Um, so that we can do that there. We'll jump over to Report Builder and edit it and walk through step-by-step step how we would do that. Now, what we have found is the uh, best kind of pattern to go through is to just create another data set that represent the amount that you're trying to look at. So rather than try and look within the data set, which you can do with some compact complex formulas and so forth. But, but what I like to do is go create a data set. We'll add a data set to my report. That data set, you know, I'll, I'll give it a more user-friendly name so that we can tell what it is. I'll call it sales. That data set's going to be uh, in my, embedded in my report. I'll do, I'm, normally I just type a SQL statement, but because you're all watching here, some of you might not be familiar with SQL. So I'm going to go through this designer. And I'll just go to my general ledger uh, period amount, and I'm going to pick, I just want the total total amount of sales. So I'll just pick amount here. Um, then what you do is I need to give it kind of a linkage to my base report so that I get the same population. So I'm just going to add in the parameters that I used on the other report, which was the totals for a particular year, and I'll make that a parameter, and period. So if I go ahead and I say year and period here, those are parameters. And then I need to specify which account or account combination represents my sales. Now I have a summary account that I am um, that I'm going to put in here. So I'm going to put uh, chart level two summary account. We'll call it name. And I think that account is called operating income. If I'm not mistaken, we're going to go with it. So we're going to say it's operating income. So whatever account or combination of accounts represents that, you just put on the filter. Then I'll just say, OK. We'll say, OK, here. Then what I'm going to do is, um, just so we can see it in our report. Now, you don't have to display it in the report, but I like to just see that I'm getting the right amount. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a matrix uh, into that report on my sales data set. And we'll put that amount in there. Say, next. We'll just walk through that. And we've done that on some of our other videos where I walk through there. And then I'll add a I'll add a label in here to call it total sales. So I'm going to insert a column to the left here where I can just type in total sales. There again, you wouldn't have to display that or do any of this in here, but I like to 
just make sure that I'm getting the uh, right amount uh, into it. And I'll make that a currency. So now if I run this report now, what it's going to do is show me my total sales. And then it still has to say. Now to, to use that value down here in this other matrix is actually quite simple. Once you have that, we're going to insert a column to the right. And then we're going to create an expression. So for those of you that um, remember, uh, anytime you want to do anything kind of out of just dropping a field in, you create an expression, which is like a formula. Now, this expression is going to be a percentage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the fields from my data set, which is my amount. Now, I don't want just the amount. I want the sum of the amount because I've actually summarized it by account on my screen. So I always make sure to put the sum around that amount. Otherwise, it's going to be an individual field. And in this case, I've summarized it by, by amount. So I'm going to say the sum of, sum of the amount divided by, now the, here's where it varies. Because I'm going to a data set that's different than what I'm showing in my base report, I click on data sets, and then you'll notice the sales data set I created. And I'll double click to say the sum of my uh, amount from my sales data set. And I'll say, okay. And now that is in the, in the report. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to format that as a percentage and I'll put that on the right just so it right justifies it, sets it aside a little bit. Now, if I go ahead and run this, I have my percentage of sales off to the right. So to kind of summarize, um, what you do is you create a separate data sets that represents your total amounts for the lines that you're trying to do a percentage of. Then in your original data source or data set, you can create an expression that references that second data set. So rather than trying to look down to another line within your data source, just represent that in a separate data source. Even if you had it in the, in the first one, go ahead and put it in a second one. There's a slight performance penalty you pay for it, but um, because it's using the same indexes and all of that, if your data source is set up right, it really shouldn't affect it too much. So that is going to summarize our session for today as far as how we um, create a percentage of sales or percentage of any other amount for that reason, for that matter. Uh, if you have suggestions for future sessions, feel free to reach out at info at dashboardgear.com. And until next week, thanks for listening.